Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 261, so welcome. If it's your first time here, say first time in the chat. We're so happy you're here. Really quickly, I want to give a shout out to all of you to thank you so much for supporting me and my business. And I wanted to give you a quick like, yay, thank you. So I was recognized today as demonstrator number 14 here in the US. I am incredibly humbled and grateful and super excited. And anyways, I have, I'm full of emotions and things. So, so, so happy for that. I do also wanna thank you all so much for all of your love and prayers um, for Murphy's loss. I'm going to do a really quick, um, woo, a really quick tribute to her, if you don't mind. So, this was Murphy the first day that we brought her home. She was just a couple months shy of turning 14 when we lost her a week ago, our golden retriever, and she really did help us to raise the kids. So you'll see with these photos that they are just. She just was always there with them. So it's hard, to, it's hard to lose her. There's Brian with Murphy. He's seen on a delay. She was the biggest snuggle bug. And this is Murphy and her best bud, Kona. We are so very grateful that we have Kona because she's allowing us to pour all of our extra love into her. So that is helping our hearts heal as well. And this is exactly how I picture Murphy now with her legs restored. Ooh, excuse me. No gray hairs, a shiny black nose, and a ball ready for fetching. So thank you so, so much for all of your love. We appreciate you. Her ashes came home today, and we are healing. So thank you, thank you. I'm going to switch gears here because otherwise my, <laughs> my emotions are going to get crazy. So Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching for your questions tonight. I have a fun, fun project for you. We're gonna be creating this gift box, which believe it or not, perfectly fits a hand cream and a hand sanitizer from Bath and Body Works. So that's what we're making tonight. If you do have questions during tonight's live stream, please be sure to put a Q colon in front of that question that will get into my Q at the end and I will stay on until I answer all of your questions. I'm trying not to read your comments too much. Thank you all so, so much. All right. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Please use my current host code. And the easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop, which will auto magically add the current host code to your order for you. If you plan to place an order of 150 or more, don't add the host code because you're going to earn stamp and rewards and you will automatically get Pixie Perks from me as well. So show and tell again, really quickly, this is the box we're making and I'm going to show you, well, I, this is tied like a tie, but I do have two things to show you from the kids. So Lily, this was artwork she was working on this week. This is our fourth grader. And I think she was using, um, pastels maybe is what that was. I love kind of the shading around the butterfly there. So that's the artwork she picked for you today. Want this to break and of course Nolan has Legos this is our first grader this is a Minecraft um, Lego set that I think he got as a belated birthday present so he uh, had a lot of fun doing this now that ties right into his Halloween costume he was Steve from Minecraft Lily was Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter so they had a really good time at Halloween we got I don't know how many pounds of candy feels like 10 pounds. So anyways, here we are. This is the little gift box and I want to show you my inspiration for this. I had to be a little easy on myself this week. Uh, I did have my hands busy, which helped. But this little container I actually found at Bath and Body Works. And so I deconstructed it to come up with the paper pixie version using cardstock. So I'm going to show you how to create this today. It's such a fun little box. Now, this is reminiscent of a lot of gift boxes I've created in the past. 
using the envelope punch board, but I'm gonna show you how to use how to create this without using the envelope punch board. So really, really cute. Now the idea to put the hand sanitizer and hand cream also came from this box. This was a ready to go gift. And I thought this would just be so cute for the holidays to give, a teacher gift, you name it, because everybody needs hand sanitizer and hand cream these days. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I do have a project sheet ready to go for you tonight. Brian will share that at the end of the live stream, as well as I'll put a link in the description. Now, if you are watching this on replay, you can skip through all of this. In about 24 hours, I'm gonna add the chapters to this video and you can jump right to the project or jump right to the Q&A to make it easy for replay. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with a piece of polished pink cardstock and this measures seven inches by eight and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored. I love, love, love the Simply Scored. It's my favorite tool ever. And I'm gonna go ahead and score. Let me get my measurements here. We're gonna go ahead and score along the seven inch side at one and three quarters three and one quarter, five, and six and a half. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise. Well, let me repeat those really quickly for those of you who are writing things down, but you'll have the project sheet at the end. One and three quarters, three and one quarter, five, six and a half. I'm gonna rotate it clockwise and we're gonna score this at one and a half five and three quarters. Now for this next score line, I'm gonna flip the cardstock this way and score on the back side at, let's see, six and a half. And then I'm gonna flip it back and we're gonna do seven and a quarter. All right, so that's one and a half, five and three quarters. I flipped it, six and a half, flipped it back and seven and a quarter. Okay, now I'm gonna rotate it counterclockwise again. This time I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the top, we're, excuse me, we're gonna go backwards here. So when we scored this on the opposite side, this middle score line, I think you can tell on the camera, it's actually a mountain score line because we scored it on this side of the cardstock. So I'm gonna turn that mountain score line into a valley fold. We're gonna fold that backwards. I do like to burnish at this point, just to get that nice and crisp. But we're gonna come in and make some tick marks and that's gonna help us put our little diagonal cutouts for this. Gives it the top of this gift box a really beautiful look and a great place to tie ribbon. So it's gonna be quite a few little tick marks. I'm just taking the ball tip of my stylus. I prefer the smaller end, but the large end works too. And we're gonna make a tick mark. I'm gonna, there's gonna be lots of measurements here, but they're all written down on the project sheet. So half of an inch. I'm just taking the ball tip and pressing it right there at that measurement at the top of the scoreboard. So you can see that little mark there that's gonna help us when we go to cut this, okay? Then the next one is gonna be at one and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a half, and hold on, five and a half, and I think I might need to update. Hold on, five and a half and six. Okay, I need to update that, I think. Tick marks, five and a half and six. All right, I'm gonna update the project sheet. So I will give you the link, but I will update it as soon as the live stream is over. Making sure that's right, okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got half inch, one and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a half, and six, okay? So we've made those tick marks. That's gonna help us do our little diagonal cuts. Gonna go ahead and put away the Simply Scored. And then I'm gonna turn this so the fold faces me so I can see those little tick marks. Essentially, the tick marks are a half of inch, are half an inch, away from these vertical score lines. So that's sort of the method to that madness, okay? So I'm gonna bring in my paper snips. 
This is going to look a lot like our impossible boxes um, and how we cut them, but it's going to go together a little bit differently. So I'm going to take the tick mark and cut on the diagonal from here to the next score line. So I'm gonna do that while the paper's folded. This saves us a lot of work. We don't need an X-Acto knife for this. We're gonna let the score line help us um, do a little bit of the work here for us. So again, tick mark on the diagonal to that next score line. And we're gonna kinda zigzag the way we cut that. So again, tick mark, but I'm gonna go in the opposite direction to that score line. Really the intersection of those two score lines. Then we're gonna cut at the next tick mark, and this is gonna remove a whole triangle here. Let, let me show you what happens. When you open that, you have that diamond shape magically appear. So you're just gonna work your way down, again, tick mark to the score line, sort of zigzagging in a way. Alternating each time as you cut. And then what we can do is this piece, we're gonna remove actually this whole section, but I'm also gonna come in and miter cut, like so, okay? So when I open this, that's what it looks like. You got those diamonds are already cut out. Essentially the envelope punch board would have done this for us in the past, but I wanted to show you an alternative there since we don't carry that anymore, okay? Let me get these pieces out of the way. All right, so now what we can do is fold and burnish on the score lines. The remaining score lines we have to burnish, we can just go ahead and turn all of these valley score lines into mountain folds, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on the rest of the score lines. Just take your time and work your way around. There we go. So we've got all of those score lines are folded and burnished, so they're nice and crisp. I'm gonna come in and do a little bit of cutting with my paper. This top part, I'm just gonna come in and miter cut slightly. And then on this long tab here, I'm gonna miter cut down here as well. And we're gonna cut up each of these vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line. Now for me, it's always easier for me to see the score lines on the back. I suppose it's the mountain score lines are just easier to see. But I'm just cutting right down the middle of those score lines. and then removing that corner section as well that's been miter cut. Okay, so those are all cut now. I'm gonna remove a little bit of the bulk on these two square tabs. I'm gonna fold the wider ones out. They're just slightly wider. These two sections here are one and three quarter inches wide. These two are one and a half. So those are the two I'm gonna trim a little bit off the tabs. I do like to use the paper trimmer for this, but you can absolutely use your paper snips as well. So I'm just gonna make, I'm just got these two big tabs folded out of the way and I'm gonna line up this folded edge here at uh, seven eighths of an inch, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut and we're removing five eighths of an inch from those tabs. That's just gonna reduce the overlap. Again, you can eyeball that as well. Like so. Okay, so I'm gonna move those big sections out of the way again. We'll come in and miter cut. All right, just like that. Now before we glue this together, we're gonna to go ahead and put on our designer series paper. So I'm gonna grab my liquid glue and our designer series paper pieces, okay? So let me tell you the measurements on these. We've got two pieces that measure four inches by, hold on, four inches by one and a half inches. These are the wider ones that are gonna go in these sections. 
These are three quarters of an inch by one and a half inches, and those are gonna go up here at the top, okay? Then we've got two pieces that are four inches by one and a quarter. Now, if this was a directional pattern of paper, you would want to do these in portrait. And then I've got two pieces that are three quarters by one and a quarter. Now this paper is from the fabulous, hold on, the Fitting Florets collection. This actually released today. Let's talk about this briefly while we got the paper out. It released yesterday, November 1st, and it's got a beautiful set of designer series paper. This pattern is my favorite color, so of course it's the first one that I wanted to work with. In the collection of products, there's designer series paper, which is exclusive until it's while supplies last. Gold adhesive backed swirls, these are also while supplies last. Now let me show you what those look like up close. They're beautiful. And there's also a holiday set that is exclusive as well, framed and festive, and I absolutely love this set. The fonts, the sentiments, everything about it. Now the framed florets bundle is gonna be a carryover into the next mini catalog, but you can get it now, so it's an early release. And we have the framed florets stamp set and the framed florets dies. Yay for them being named the same. Again, fabulous sentiments. I love this one for this project. Just a little reminder that you are loved. And the framed florets dies have some amazing ovals in it and accessories as well. You can do lots of fun things with these ovals. Not only the intricate outside part, but also the ovals that are cut out from the inside, the negatives. You can create frames and all kinds of wonderful things. So I love this collection of products. Again, the paper, the embellishments, and the framed and festive stamp set while supplies last through the end of the year. And then the framed florets is early release, but we can still get it in the mini catalog um, starting in January or continuing into January. All right, so liquid glue, we're gonna go ahead and adhere the designer series paper. I love liquid glue for this. Gives me a little bit of a chance to get things right where I want it lined up. I'm gonna turn it sideways. I don't know about you guys, but I always feel it's easier for me to line things up landscape. <laughs> It's just funny how, maybe it's how my brain works, landscape versus portrait. I'll just work my way around to adhere these. I just, this combination of balmy blue, night of navy, and polished pink is just stunning. I love these colors together. And easy to turn this into a beautiful holiday project as well as any occasion. Oh good, we've got some people that like to, to do landscape or line up on landscape too. <laughs> All right. All right, then we'll do the little guys again, turning it so these are landscape, just easier for me to line up. And you'll have an eighth of an inch of the polished pink peeking out from behind that designer series paper. You can edit the uh, measurements if you like. If you like a little sliver, like a sixteenth of an inch, you just wanna make these a little bit bigger. But I do love the fact that these strips are four inches, so those are great for maximizing the cuts from your designer series paper. For this, I just, cu I just cut strips of designer series paper, a one and a half inch strip and a one and a quarter inch strip, like one and a half by 12 and one and a quarter by 12, and then I just cut these pieces out of it. Still had a little bit left over in the strips. All right, there we go. So we've got all of that paper adhered, but look how pretty that looks. I love that dark background with that beautiful pop of pink. 
So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over. I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left to reveal these tabs here. I'm gonna put liquid glue along the tabs. Like so. And then we're gonna fold on the first score line from the right, and as long as you press this flat, your score lines are gonna line everything up for you. Yeah, that's the chat box. The chat bot's not working. I don't think it says welcome first. <laughs> All right, so we've done that. This is going to be our back here because that's where the seam is. So as we go to glue the bottom, I'm going to fold in those two tabs. Now trimming it, those are not overlapping at this point. So liquid glue on the tabs. And then I like to do liquid glue right here along the front flap. Oops. There we go. All right, so we're gonna fold the back flap over the tabs and then the front flap. And then I like to square things up in the corners with that liquid glue and then flip it over and the glue bottle is gonna be a little too short to fit in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my bone folder. I'm just pressing those tabs down on the inside like so. All right, so let me go ahead and open this guy because I wanna show you how those fit in here. I tied this like a tie because this ribbon is a little difficult to create bows. Um, so, just because it's got the one-sided balmy blue. So I've got hand cream and hand sanitizer, also known as pocket back from Bath and Body Works. I found, going, I found putting the hand sanitizer in first. I don't know if you can see that, but I've, it's a little dark in there because this is deep. And then I'm gonna take the hand cream with the flat end first, and that's just gonna tuck right behind the hand cream. Now, let me show you, it's hard to see in the box. Let me show you how that was, um, this will be a little bit easier to see on the box that I got from Bath & Body Works. So you've got the hand sanitizer here in the front, and then the hand cream fits right in the back, and it's just a perfect fit in there. They're just nestled together. So that's how they're fitting in this box. But we made it with our own two hands, which I love. <sighs> Plastic's fighting with me right now. There we go. All right. Go ahead and put the sanitizer in. Again, hand cream, flat end first. And then that's gonna perfectly fit in there and allow us to tie our ribbon. So we'll see if the ribbon's gonna cooperate with me today. First, let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping. I just have a 5 8 of an inch by 3 inch piece of basic white. And we're gonna stamp that in Knight of Navy. And this is the sentiment, just a little reminder that you are loved. And which way are we doing that? Okay, let's do... Harden my head here, gonna get this lined up. I love photopolymer for this. There we go. I'm just gonna cut a little banner end here using my paper snips. And you may have seen this trick before, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut about, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch, a little slit there in the paper. And then I'm just gonna connect the corner to the top of the slit. And we'll create our little banner end. Like so. Okay. Next, I'll just take some liquid glue here. And then the fun part will begin when Julie attempts to do a ribbon tie on a live stream. <laughs> we never know. All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and line that up with the designer series paper. So lining it up at the top, but I'm putting that a little bit off to the left, but lined up to the top edge of that cardstock. Then we're gonna grab one of the gold adhesive backed swirls And my trusty take your pick tool. We're just gonna pop that right up there on the top for a little bit of bling. 
Now I've got a couple of suggestions for this box. If you don't wanna do like it's sort of a necktie tie is what I'm gonna end up doing with the um, balmy blue and white double stitched ribbon. It's gorgeous ribbon. This comes from the Gnomes suite, but you'll notice that balmy blue, that thin eighth of an inch ribbon is only on one side. So that can get really tricky when you're trying to tie a bow. You can do it, but you've got to sort of twist and turn and twist and turn to get all of the balmy blue to show up on the loops and the tails. You can also do this beautiful iridescent trim that will give you a really nice bow. So let me go ahead and show you that first. I'd love to see what your preference is here. Um, now, because we put those little diamond cutouts in here, this ribbon is gonna just perfectly squeeze that together for us at the top and give us that really nice finish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie a bow and show you what this one looks like because I just couldn't decide which one I liked better. But I think that that um, iridescent trim, let's just pretend that the roll is not here because I'm gonna save it. But this looks really pretty with the balmy blue and the Knight of Navy, that iridescence to it. So that would be really cute. So you've got options here. The crinkled seam binding ribbon would be beautiful. So take a look at your stash of ribbons that you have for a box like this. Um, you really can't go wrong with any thickness um, of, or width of ribbon. They should all work for you. But I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to do a necktie here. Now I'm laughing because I helped Lily with her Halloween costume. She was um, as I mentioned, Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter, and so she had a Harry Potter tie on, or a Ravenclaw tie, I think is what it was. So I, um, Brian wasn't here, and I was trying to figure out how the heck do I do a tie. So if I remember, okay, so we've got our tail here. Now, many of you have tied ties probably hundreds of times. I vividly remember watching my dad, who is probably watching, tying his ties. So I do remember it to a certain extent. So I've got the tail coming over from the left and I'm gonna wrap this around once and then I'm gonna kind of go, am I doing this right? I think so. Then I'm gonna go up through the top here. <laughs> I'm gonna do this slowly. Hold on, let's do it again. Okay, so got the tail coming over the left, okay, to the right. I'm gonna wrap this around once like so, okay. Then this is gonna go up through the little V-neck there. And then it's gonna come down through this front loop, like so. See that? Then what you're gonna pull is actually the one still attached to the spool to tighten that little knot there, okay? You can kind of pull from both ends. But doing that little necktie is actually gonna make sure that that ribbon, the balmy blue, shows all the way around and the knot. That's why I decided, you know what? Let's do a little necktie here. Did I do that right? I think I did it okay. Brian's giving me a nod. So there's that, okay? Then what I can do is just come in and cut the tails. You can make these as long as you want. I'm gonna cut them, I don't know, probably about here. Kind of do them in different orientations there. And then you just have something a little different for that gift box, sort of a little side ribbon pull, but it keeps the top closed. Super fun and cute and something different. So something easier to, again, to show that beautiful balmy blue on this one-sided but beautiful ribbon. So as I said, if you're brave enough to try a bow, go for it. You're just gonna have to do a couple twists and turns for sure. But there we have our hand cream and hand sanitizer, hand cream and sanitizer gift box featuring the, I always forget the names, you guys, the Fitting Florets Designer Series paper and the Fabulous Florets sentiment there. Just a little reminder that you are loved. So there we go for tonight's project. Why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's Q&A here. I'm gonna tee things up. We're gonna do things a little bit differently tonight so that I can make sure to, to, make, to get all of the questions answered here. So let me start at the top. I'm gonna pop them up on the screen here. Any update on retired sale? Not yet, Linda. I obviously, with life circumstances, things got pushed to the side again. I've got everything pulled, 
but now will be the process of pricing and taking photos and all of that stuff. So I'm hoping between, I am headed to onstage next weekend, not this weekend, next weekend. So I'm hoping in the next few weeks, everything always seems to get pushed to the side. Ooh, what would be the easiest 3D project to mass produce? Ooh, that's a good question, Linda. <laughs> um, I have a couple on, well, I have a lot of projects on my blog. Um, the easiest to mass produce would be one that doesn't require a lot of cutting. So um, I've got a couple of fun ones that are wrapped around little Hershey's miniatures. Um, any of the Hershey's nuggets projects typically are fairly easy to reproduce. Um, but I may have to think about that, Linda. On the fly, I'm nothing's coming to mind specifically. Um, but I do have lots to reproduce. Now I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek of what you're going to see next week. This is the paper pixie version of a mini post-it note holder. So that's going to be next week. I'm going to actually share with you the three swaps that I'm taking with me to on stage. And this is one that will be very easy to reproduce, um, quick and easy as well. It just holds a little, uh, mini post-it notes or sticky notes. Okay. Great question though. What are you searching on? For um, projects easy to reproduce. No, for questions. I'm searching on Q. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see. Ooh, what do I have for ladies socks? I actually don't have any projects specific to socks. Um, we, I may have some that would work for that, but it also depends on the thickness of the sock of the socks, um, but that's a great suggestion. I will keep that in mind for sure, Sonia, thank you. Oh, how much candy did I get or did Lily get? Um, the kids literally, their bags, they have the um, reusable grocery bags and they're like three quarters full. By the end of trick-or-treating, Nolan was like, mommy, I can't carry my bag anymore. Can you carry it for me? It was super heavy, so. But I do have lots of candy. You know me with my treat boxes for sure. Have I ever demonstrated an eclipse card? I have not, but now I'm intrigued as well. I need to go check out what an eclipse card looks like. Um, I'll check it out, Jennifer. Thank you. Let's see. After you make your score marks, is there a reason why you turn your cardstock clockwise? It is just easiest for me to remember, Margaret, that it's sort of how my brain works when I come up with measurements and how I, um, it's really specifically to how my brain works. I always kind of score, obviously, left to right, and then it's just natural for me to turn it clockwise. That also helps me make sure that I'm telling you the correct thing every time. The, as consistent as I can be with that stuff, it makes me not make mistakes when I teach it to all of you as well. Um, Lisa Curcio is number one in the United States. She's awesome, so incredible. Does Stampin' Up! typically have early releases like this? They do, they've been doing them a little bit more often. Usually it is maybe just one bundle from a, an upcoming catalog. And then they'll typically sprinkle in a couple exclusive products like the paper and the embellishments and that holiday sentiment stamp set just to add a little bit more fun to the products as an early release. The envelopes to hold my dies. This is Brian's not asking the question, but Terry Mitchell, thank you, Brian, for grabbing that. Um, I have those linked on my favorites page, as you can't see that. One second. <laughs> Thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. They are on Amazon. I, they're called C-Line Shop Ticket Holders. They are five by eight shop ticket holders that I cut down to seven and a quarter inches. And the five by seven stamp and storage magnet cards fit perfectly within those pockets. I love those pockets so, so much. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. What is the weight of the paper that I'm using? The cardstock is 80 pound cover weight, Deborah. Um, I'm not sure what the weight is of the designer series paper, but the cardstock is 80 pound cover weight. So it's really wonderful to work with. Great for boxes. Oh, thank you, Virginia. Um, so I, I ranked number 14 in the U.S. overall for um, Stampin' Up! for the um, 2021 to 2022 year. So I'm super thrilled, so honored, and 
all of the recognition goes to all of you guys. So thank you so much for supporting me and being just amazing support people. I appreciate it. Lynn, thumbs up. It just lets YouTube know that you like what you're watching. That's what the thumbs up does for me. It is. It does help me out, but great question. Let's see. Um, how do I store my oversized embossing folders and dies and in what type sleeves, if any? So the oversized embossing folders and dies. So um, embossing folders, I store them all in one of the stamp and storage creative crates. It's really heavy and I'm not able to pull it out of my drawer, but I love their creative crates. That's also where I store the dies. Now the oversized dies like the Oh, their tags dies and they stick off the end. I don't have those stored in my normal um, storage solution just because I haven't come up with a solution for that. Um, but the uh, embossing folders fit perfectly in the creative crates with the multiple. We've got like three different sizes of embossing folders. Just to kind of show you an example. So here is like a normal size. This is the oversized sort of square one, and then we have these little narrow ones as well. These all fit in the Stampin' Storage Creative Crates. I love those Creative Crates because they've got a diagonal back to them, so it's real easy to flip through things. Would vellum work for this box? Good question, Cheryl. I think you can absolutely try it. Vellum... Um, you, I've actually not made a box out of vellum. It's going to be a little bit flimsy, but it'll be... Ooh, good question. I would give it a try if you're willing to risk a piece of vellum to try it. It might not be sturdy enough, but definitely give it a try. I don't have a good answer for you because I don't typically make boxes out of vellum, but might be worth a try. You will have to be a little bit creative in how you add adhesive for the vellum. I know that there are special adhesives like tape runners for vellum. I've heard positive and negative things about that, whether or not you can see it or not. So just something to keep in mind with adhesive. So clear envelopes from the dies. I got that question answered. Hopefully, Mary, you heard that. C-Line shop ticket holders. They are listed on my favorites page. Is photopolymer the stamp that's recommended to use a cushioned pad under for better impression, yes. I actually like to use the cushioned pad for both types of stamps, both the red rubber and the photopolymer, but it works really well with photopolymer. We do have the Stampin' Pierce mat, which I love, and that gives you a little bit of um, cushion as well. I've got a neoprene desk pad on my desk that has just, it's almost like a thin mouse pad. That's just enough cushion for that as well. You could do a couple of sheets of copy paper, uh, a couple sheets of grid paper, but absolutely the Stampin' Pierce mat or a neoprene pad will work well to give you really great ink coverage with photopolymer sets, but I love them for the red rubber as well. Would the Vera Bradley ribbon tie work to show the blue from all angles? Um, so the challenge with that, Debbie, is that you would need some type of hole for the ribbon to go through for that Vera Bradley style um, like ribbon tie. I'm not sure that would work for this one um, because you do need it to be able to loop through a hole somewhere on the box. Um, unless I'm not thinking through that right. Uh, my brain is fried, you guys. <laughs> unless I'm not thinking through that the right way. But I think you do need a hole for the Vera Bradley ribbon pull to work. So keep that in mind. Let's see. Any word on the 10 mil essential roll bottles? No, Yvette, again, the last two weeks have been difficult for us. So I haven't, I took some time off from work, but I do have a, just so you know that it is on my mind, I do have a 10 mil roller bottle of oil. So it's on my mind to do a project for that. Thank you for reminding me. Let's see. How did I master this craft? You know what? I fell in love with it. Um, Almost instantly, um, 12 years ago, I had a career change. So I had a little bit of extra time on my hands. I wasn't traveling as much. And 
I wanted to pick up a hobby and I just wanted to, um, one of the things that I wished I had done more of was sending cards to people. And I thought, well, maybe I can make my own card. So I started playing with paper about 12 years ago and the rest is history. It is one of the things that grounds me. It brings me peace and joy. And uh, the more I practice and play with paper, the more I fall in love with it. So it's just one of those things, just experience, I should say. Lots of practice, lots of paper going into the trash too. I don't always get it right, but that's all part of the creative process. So good question. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. I will hopefully, um, I may do a whole mass show of swaps because I do have swaps from backstage as well. So stay tuned for that. I will try to get that on the schedule for sure. Jennifer, On Stage is a demonstrators only event that um, is gonna be held across, really across the world. The main event will be in Vienna, but we have a number of events here in the US where it's gonna be for us a one day event to get together as demonstrators and celebrate each other and see the new catalog and see new projects and samples and just all around. It's one of my favorite things about being a demonstrator are the in-person events. So we haven't had an in-person event in a really long time other than backstage. So on stage is for all demonstrators and I'm excited for that. That's next weekend. Let's see. Oh, Emma, what is a good gift card holder project? If you go to my blog, Emma, and type in gift card, you're gonna probably see, I don't know, 20, 30 different projects for gift cards. I just recommend going to the little magnifying glass at thepaperpixie.com and type in gift card. And then just take a look at the images and see if there's something that catches your eye. I've got lots of gift card projects for sure. All right, if it's Cindy Evans, if I give you the measurements for a Hershey's hot chocolate box, Hershey's hot chocolate. Oh, hmm. Shoot me an email, Cindy. I will think about it, okay? <laughs> um, I need, I have to figure out a way to search for um, projects based on dimension. That would be, I don't know how we would ever do that, but that's a good suggestion. How do we find a list of the top 15? Um, Emma, if you're a demonstrator, that is available on the demonstrator website. If you're not a demonstrator, I don't believe that list is available publicly anywhere, um, but a lot of us have announced um, our recognition on our business pages and just shouting it out. Um, so yeah, there, I don't think there's a public list of, of the top 15. Who, if anyone, do you watch for inspiration? Oh, some of my favorites are um, Poodles is one of my favorites. Sam um, from Mixed Up Craft. She's another one of my favorites. I love Brenda Quintana. I love Julie Gilson. I gravitate towards 3D projects for sure. Um, Melissa Alvarez. Who else? My names, I'm drawing blanks, but I draw lots of inspiration from fellow demonstrators, other amazing paper crafters in the world, lots of German demonstrators. They love creating 3D projects. And Pinterest is another place that I go to for inspiration as well. I get inspiration from, for example, the box from Bath and Body Works. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, ooh, that would be a great project. Um, even just uh, other sorts, types of chocolate boxes and things that I see in the grocery store that inspire me. So I get inspiration from lots of places. Are you able to use designer series paper for boxes or are they too thin for the boxes or should I use cardstock? Darling, it actually just depends on the project. For smaller boxes, designer series paper usually works fine. For a box like this, I think that designer series paper would be a little bit too flimsy because those two things in here are pretty heavy. So for this, I would recommend cardstock. Um, but usually, if it's a smaller box, you can interchange cardstock and designer series paper for sure. The bigger the box, the more you're going to want to use cardstock. I'm loving the sleeves for the 12 by 12 paper. Kristen is asking about that. I've got them linked on my favorites page as well. These are actually um, vinyl record sleeves. They are, I think, three mil plastic, um, but they hold like up to four packs of designer series paper, if not more. I love them. They're really, really great, so.
Stampin' Storage has a new container for larger dies. It's not wood, but clear acrylic. Yes, they do. Um, it is, I don't know if it's made by iDesign, but it looks a lot like the iDesign containers. And I know a lot of people love that clear container that Stampin' Storage is offering. So be sure to check that out. They also do have a wider creative crate as well um, for those wider dies. How much was the duo pack from Bath & Body Works? Let's see. It was $9.95 is what is on the, the label. I don't know if I paid full price for it or not, but $9.95 US. I am going to Jacksonville for onstage. That's the closest location to me here in Atlanta. I will not be doing a demonstration at onstage, so I can, I can rest easy and not stress. <laughs> Um, do I have a tutorial for the for a Bath and Body Works hand cream only? I do, Jill. I've got one that also holds a gift card. Um, I don't know if I have one just for hand cream. I have to think about that. The more projects I do, the less I can remember. Um, but I definitely have one for hand cream and a gift card. Yes, Kaz. So um, the quarterly minimum for becoming a demonstrator. Now this is based in the U.S. because I'm a demonstrator in the U.S. It's a $300 quarterly minimum. If you were to join this month, you actually have until March 31st plus an additional month to reach your first quarterly minimum. So technically you can give the all the wonderful demonstrator benefits a test drive through April 30th of 2023. And then after that, it is a $300 quarterly minimum to remain active and to hang on to the, to the demonstrator perks. It is not, you're not penalized if you don't reach the $300 quarterly minimum, you just simply become inactive and you can purchase the starter kit again and join as a demonstrator at any time. So. Um, it's a great option. Ooh, Cindy, you're going to be in Jacksonville. Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. I'm excited. I'm excited to hug your neck. <laughs> you put up, oh, thank you. Um, was it just hand cream or did it have the gift card too? Brian put a link in the chat for you. He, it's, it's both. It's both. Oh, yeah, that's the, the gift card and hand cream one. Thank you. Have you or would you make a hexagon box similar to the boxes that Mexican hot chocolate comes in? Ooh, Michelle, I'm going to have to Google that and see what you're talking about. Um, I'm intrigued. You guys are good. These are some fun ideas you're giving me tonight. Um, I'll definitely check it out. I have not done that, so that's the answer for you there. <laughs> would a hex box be good? I, yep, that's another one you can post in the chat. Brian's going to post a shadow box, Jill, for hand cream as well. Would a hex box be good for socks? It could be. I do have a hexagon box that's a little bit bigger on my on my uh, blog that that might work for socks. Hmm, that would be a cute idea for sure. All right. Um, it's a hex. If you type in hexagon, <laughs> we're making Brian work tonight, y'all. Um, hexagon box. Maybe just type in hexagon. What was it for? Um, maybe to hold socks. No, but what was it originally for? Um, I think it was for a bath bomb. That one? Yes, that one is probably... He's going to drop. It's called the hexagon, tw hexagon Twist Top Gift Box. It was sized to hold a bath bomb. And that might be a good one for you. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. You are my... My one fave for 3D projects. You make the most creative things. I have watched every one of your videos. So, so talented. Thank you, Cheryl. That means the world to me. I appreciate that. All right. We have reached the end of the questions. Let's see. What's next? I'm making sure I've changed things up a little bit here. Okay, awesome. Hey, if you like today's video, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos from me. Also, if you got a tip or trick and learn something new today, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Both things help us here on YouTube and we greatly appreciate that. Thank you again for your outpouring of love for the loss of Murphy. I read each and every one of your comments. I have not had time to, to, to reply to all of you, but they have meant the world to us. Thank you for all your congratulations. I just love each and every one of you. So thank you so much. We will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 262 of Live with the Paper Pixie. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. Next week, I will be sharing three different 3D projects for you that will be my swaps for onstage.
great little ideas for you to have a bunch on hand to give out as random acts of kindness. So I'm excited to share those with you next week. Take good care and we will see you next Wednesday. Bye. 